Did you know four to five users that have completed a JD's Garage CNC plasma cutter all have one thing in common? No, it's not that they all have big wings. It's that they wished they had one of these. And as for that one guy, How are you guys doing today? I'm Thyatikus Decimus Maximus Aurelius, father of a murdered torch, husband. If you guys couldn't guess yet, I've been getting sick and tired of getting sick and tired at this machine. I tried, but I couldn't make these plastic pieces do something they were never intended to do. So I called the Canadians. Canada. No, seriously, today's video sponsor has actually went above and beyond and provided me with something that I'm actually proud to show you guys. If you haven't heard, the new heavy lifter on the block when it comes to CNC plasma lifters and accessories for the hobbyists and professionals alike is no other than Carve Cut CNC. But we'll leave a link in the video description of the exact product I received and a link to their website. If you guys want a professional level Z access that will last a lifetime, I highly recommend you check these guys out. Let's get back to it. First things first, I had to remove this old hunk of junk. I just threw the old wires out to the side and would you look at that? It's got about a year's worth of use on it and it still looks brand new. This ain't your typical piece of plastic. So I'm gonna be taking the old bearing block and the new oh. Z-axis and ow, we're gonna be mating them together. So basically I'm just gonna drill a few holes, tap them. Just tap it in. And then bolt this guy on. But to do that, I will have to remove this one. Interesting. Very interesting. And I'm also gonna be using this 3D printed drill fixture. I'm using a quarter 20 hole, whatever the drill bit diameter is for a quarter 20. Super important. And this drill bit is goes in straight. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make some clearance for the roller part. Look at that. Look at that. And I'm following the cut line. I don't want to hear it. If you guys want to do something, you can do it. Doesn't matter what tools you have. Doesn't matter. If you really want it, you can do it. I'm going to show you how great I am. I'm a little bit crooked. That's okay. Got her cut up. Would I have liked this to be slotted with a mill? Yes. You know, maybe it's just me. You guys probably don't care. If it works, it works. But when I do stuff like this, I know what the end result could be, and it just pisses me off that I have to resort to such barbaric tactics. So let's put this thing back together. If you guys are looking for somewhere to get this 6061 aluminum bearing block, still have like six or seven or something. Check the link in the description, my website. You can get one of these, I think they're like 180 bucks, which is way under market value. I had a, just a buddy machine these for pretty much just the material costs. And I had these quoted from like a, a few other machine shops and these were like 360, 400 bucks a piece. I'm like, what is going on? Trash that JD's garage plastic piece of crap and put one of these bad boys on. Okay, back outside, I'm ready to attach, reattach. So, yeah. Okay, I just got that pretty much squared off to the slats and the mounting surface. It's probably like a 64th out of square. I think that's pretty close. If you guys are making this for the first time, definitely 
do not paint the gantry or where the rails are because I even powder coated this with an industrial grade powder coat and it's starting to flake off and get caught in the bearings. So if I could have, I would have swapped these out for like a galvanized piece or stainless. Yeah. Oh yeah. That looks sweet. Yes, it's much taller than I actually need. So if I wanted to, I could raise this gantry up and I could put down uh, some like square tubing or something like that underneath. We can get rid of this guy. No wiggle in that guy at all. Oh, so this actually takes the... Oh, that'll be nice. Now we can actually change out the nozzle without having to take the whole thing out. Pretty much the same setup as the JD's Garage one. Micro slips out the top, but uh, it has the, the stage two part right there. Before I did this with this plastic one, this guy here, and the whole... This whole plastic piece without even moving it, there's just so much play back and forth. There's no, no play in that at all. I think he, um, Carve Cut, offers a pro version too, where there's another attachment point up top. I just noticed that. I don't like that. There's no screws on the top. It looks like the only ones holding this in place. You see that moving back and forth like that? So he's got two screws at the bottom holding that in place. Should be two more on top. There's gotta be some reason. Or these just, the, back, the ones on the back just aren't tightened up enough. I suppose I could take it off and tighten it again. It's much better. Okay, I'm gonna wire this up. Um, the switch that this came with, the micro switch that this came with, actually has some super small prongs. So I had to go to AutoZone to get some like gold micro connectors for audio cables. They were very expensive. For this one, I will just use some quick connect spade cables that I got off of Amazon. You guys might have noticed my waste oil burner is not there anymore. Turns out, if you don't have a readily available source of waste oil, it's actually really difficult to get. So I had to switch to wood. Wood's always available. And to be honest, this is kind of better. It, does, it doesn't put out quite as much heat as the waste oil burner, but it lasts much longer and it's much, much quieter. I like the crackle of the fire and the ambiance. You know you're not supposed to use that. I know. I know. I'm not supposed to do a lot of things, but it still happens. And I really shouldn't need to adjust anything. The one thing I may have to do is switch out the driver and or the power source for this one because there was a much smaller motor on there before. There's like a 3D printer motor. This is an actual, this is a big kahuna. Perfect. Okay, it's the next day. I got her hooked up to the computer and just giving it the test runs. These, the Y axes shouldn't change. And the X axis looks like it's handling the extra weight. Yeah. And I'm, I can even give it some pressure and it's still good. Here is the Z. I don't have a plus Z limit switch installed. So I just gotta be careful not to go all the way up. Works good though. <coughs> so then next, what I need to do is measure that stroke from the time it touches the top of the material to when the limit switch actually clicks. Then I can go back and enter that into my postcode on sheet cam. So I'm gonna re-zero the axis out. So I don't have to do any calculations except for converting it. Then I'm gonna just jog the z-axis down in uh, fine increments until it clicks. So 0.121 of an inch. So I'm in sheet cam. We're gonna go up to options, machine, and then post processor. If you, I'll try to link the video in the description where I went over where I got my post prospect where I got my post processor from. But from here, I'm gonna go to set custom post options and then the floating torch mount travel. 
and then I'm going to enter in my value, which I believe is 0.121. So when I export this test code, we should be sitting at right about 60 thousandths of an inch from the top of the part. Guys, this is what it's all about. The small, little wins, the day-to-day -day things that you do to try and get just a little bit better. For me and my business and this hunk of junk behind me, just doing those two little things that I've been fighting with for probably a few weeks to a month now and finally getting that done is gonna help me tremendously. The little things every day. It's really giving me a lot of motivation just looking back at everything that I have accomplished in even the last three or four months, seeing where I could be in the next five to 10 years. So super excited about that. And I'm hoping I can give you guys some motivation to keep going and whatever it is you're doing, even if it is slow progress, just keep working at it every day. You never know where you might end up. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Check out my next video. We're going to be stalling a JD's Garage THC. If it's not there yet, be patient.